we did it. We made it. We're in a botany class. Uh, we learned about plant anatomy and physiology, but we haven't actually learned about types of plants yet. So this is our first group of plants, the bryophytes. And these bryophytes were the first group of plants, we think, to move onto land. Um, their physiology and kind of morphology really match that early terrestrial environment. Um, so on the left, you can see a picture of a moss. Um, those are the bryophyta, which is confusing because that's only one group of the bryophytes. So a little overview, this particular video, we're just going to look at adaptations for movement onto land and how that sort of unifies these characteristics for plants. Um, and then the next few videos, we'll look at different lineages of bryophytes and the ecological importance of sphagnum. So movement onto land. Um, this is a huge undertaking for uh, plants, or what would become plants. We had algae that lived in the ocean or in freshwater ecosystems where they were supported by the medium they were in. So water is a very dense medium relative to air. So if you're going to move from the water to this terrestrial surface, you're completely exposed um, to more sunlight, right? And you also have no physical support around you. So when we looked at algal groups, they all had um, thalli. Uh, they had um, these undifferentiated tissue systems with no internal support system. So if you think about organisms that live on land, most of them have some sort of structural support that allows us to be upright and to move around, um, or at least to uh, support ourselves off of this like flat surface, because um, we know plants don't move around on their own, but having some structural support system. So you're also more exposed to sunlight. In the water column, sunlight rays get bounced around and um, deflected and reflected, uh, and you have to kind of maximize your access to that sunlight. Whereas if you live on land suddenly, you are trying to then shield yourself from this fiery ball of death that is going to have harmful UV radiation um, and is gonna dry out your tissues. So that's the other big thing, is that if you move from the water where you had access to the water year round and all day and all night, uh, you don't really have this fluctuation in water availability. And then you move to a terrestrial surface, suddenly you have seasons, you have day and night, you have all of these fluctuations that you have to be adapted for. So many challenges to this movement from an aquatic environment to a terrestrial environment. So we can look at those synapomorphies, these things that plants share, um, that all derived from a common ancestor. So they're terrestrial, they moved onto land, and as they did that, um, they had to become complex and multicellular. So not only are all plants multicellular, where we had these unicellular green algae, unicellular red algae, all plants are gonna be multicellular. They're also going to arrange those cells into tissues. So groups of cells that are all working toward the same function. All plants have that alternation of generations life cycle that we learned about, where they have a haploid multicellular phase and a diploid multicellular phase to complete their life cycle. They'll also have multicellular gametangia, um, and that's kind of part of that complex multicellularity. They'll have um, an embryo. So um, we saw this in red algae where they retained um, the sporophyte on the female gametophyte. So that carposporophyte grew on the female gametophyte and the female gametophyte nourished and fed it and protected it. The same thing's gonna happen with plants. We don't have that extra diploid phase, uh, but we do have this retention of the egg um, or the zygote really, and then you nourish that zygote. So this helps us survive in this kind of harsh environment. And the last one, sporopollenin, is a coating on spores for early plants, and then later when pollen evolves, it's a coating on the pollen. So that's where that name comes from, sporopollenin. And it's the most decay and chemical resistant biopolymer known. Um, so this was an incredible adaptation for plants to be able to move into this harsh, desiccating uh, UV radiation environment. So traits of all land plants, you can write some of these down here. The body plan we know is complex multicellular, and tissues sort of evolve within the bryophyte group, so we'll have some um, less differentiated uh, bryophytes. The environment is terrestrial, some plants do move back into the water, not till later. Photosynthetic pigments are going to be the same as we saw in the green algae. So we have chlorophyll A, just like all photosynthetic organisms, and then we have chlorophyll B, that more grassy green chlorophyll, and carotenoids. And the carotenoids 
are going to help uh, dissipate this excess heat energy. Um, so we are going to be absorbing a lot of sunlight and um, using that for photosynthesis, but we might have more heat that comes along with that. So carotenoids help dissipate that heat, keep the plant from overheating as it's uh, performing photosynthesis, and that um, offers them some sun protection. And the chlorophyll B is going to help us get more of those um, like blue and uh, red areas of um, the spectrum. All right, storage carbohydrate, we have starch in plastids, and that is going to be just like our green algae because those are um, kind of continuous with the land plants. Our cell walls are made of cellulose as we've seen in many groups of organisms. And the life cycle is alternation of generations. Alternation of generations. Which is also called haplodiplontic. Um, you might also see it called sporic meiosis. So there's a, a lot of names out there. Here's a review slide of all of those traits. So you don't just want to memorize these traits, you want to be able to relate them to life on land. Um, so think about how everything throughout the adaptation of all these different groups of um, plants that we'll look at, how that relates to life on land and then the changing terrestrial surface. Whereas it would have started out bare and rocky um, and how that is going to transition into the sort of adaptations that plants have to have now in what the earth looks like today. So always keep that in mind as we move along through these groups.